the first question I had for you was, um, when did you first come into contact with charismatic renewal in the Catholic Church? Oh, that is a good story. <laughs> so, a long time ago, before all of you young people were around, I was in a place called Basingstoke, yes. you might have heard of, in the 1970s. And I'd been on the missions and had said Latin Mass, but somehow I felt that in those days, the times, they were changing, and you're not going to convert the world anymore by the Latin Mass. And so there was something missing in the church, I thought. And uh, what can we do about it? Now, I was with a, a group of five priests in Basingstoke, and uh, we had our weekly meetings. And at the end of one meeting, they said, well, there's a day of prayer for priests, uh, the grail, if anybody would like to go. So I thought, well, that won't do me any harm. So I went. And at the prayer meeting was Father Ian Pettit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and a group of other priests, Benedict Heron, and priests like that. And so they started praying together. Father Ian gave a talk, which is good. And they were praying away. And next door to me, there was a guy, a Dutch guy, I could tell he was Dutch. And he started praying away in some funny way. And he really wasn't English, wasn't French, wasn't Chinese, wasn't Malay. What was it? And so we had a lot of help. Father Ian Pettit, Benedict Heron, uh, Mike Gwinnell. I was just greedy, I'm afraid. Our need was was very great. And so <laughs> I looked around in Portsmouth Diocese to see if there was any other priests interested in charismatic renewal. And I found just one, Father Leo Target. And Father Leo <laughs> had been a missionary in Peru as a, as a diocesan priest. And he'd gone for a holiday up to North America and met a priest called Francis McNutt. <laughs> and so <laughs> when Father Leo got back to Portsmouth Diocese, we met at a pub somewhere and said, well, what can we do about, about all this? Well, I was living in uh, Basingstoke, and somehow there was a, a gentleman called Ron Nichols, and I was friendly with him. And he did the driving, and we drove all over the country. Uh, <laughs> uh, there was one bishop, Bishop Langton Fox. He was the only one interested the only bishop interested. And uh, so, something charismatic, we drove there. Uh, there was a Bob Balkum, an American, with Father Ian Pettit, yeah. and he was stationed in Shorten at the Redemptorist House, where they had books, books about charismatic renewal. So yours truly, of course, uh, bought a lot of those books and, and read them. And we got very, <laughs> we got very interested. And we went to listen to Francis McNutt in Birmingham. And there was a wonderful American group called the Community of Celebration with a guy called Bob Polkingham. And they were so joyful in their singing 
of, you know, fairly short little charismatic tunes. And I began to love them. And of course, I learned them because <laughs> I was sort of interested in music. Uh, and there was a nun called Sister Breege McKenna. And she used to run a day for priests up in Leeds in Hinsley Hall. So I used to drive up there and met her. And in the olden days, there was a load of nuns who would wait to see the priest. Well, now it was a load of priests <laughs> waiting to listen to this nun. <laughs> and so uh, she prayed over us all and she showed us uh, we had to put our hands into a glove used by uh, Saint Padre Pio and so we went and uh, prayed our socks off and uh, actually <clears throat> I had been teaching boys in our junior seminary in Freshfields which is really up the, up the railway line from Liverpool and they would be saying well father how do you like the Beatles and I listened to the Beatles and I thought it was lovely and of course I had to learn to play guitar so <laughs> I became a three what's called a three chord wonder you learn three chords and you're in business and uh, so we went in 1978 with my sister who's still alive she's in Staines and we went to the international conference of charismatic renewal in uh, 1978 that was in Dublin a fair city so we had a wonderful conference there and we met David Duplessis who was the leader of the uh, Pentecostal church or had been pushed by the leader to go to these funny churches like uh, Catholics <laughs> and so uh, we knew the sisters in Olson because uh, one of our nuns in Basingstoke was belonged to that uh, order and so they let us use their beautiful convent and I'd never played guitar in public before I thought it mm. but I sort of dared to do that <laughs> and, uh, we had Bob uh, we had everybody talking at the conference and uh, we just really enjoyed it and of course the Lord is very powerful in his spirit and he does very powerful things. He gives us Damien Stain, the miracles of healing. Uh, he gives us in modern times a wonderful holy English lady called Edwina Gately who had helped Mill Hill and is now in America, lives in America, and has books on mystical prayer, contemplative prayer. And so, of course, I went full time for that as well. So, <laughs> sort of holy greed, really. But now, once and for all, now and for all times, Pope Francis. <laughs> Who wants the whole church to be charismatic? Wonderful. And so, what more <laughs> could you desire? So, that's my little story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs>